I could get up here and give a talk called How to Be Turf Perfect. And we've all seen this talk at many tech conferences, right? Probably seen it a couple of times this week, where someone gets up and says, this is the, you know, the platonic form of architecture that we have at my company, and it runs smoothly, and everything is beautiful, and when things break, we all you know, group hug, and there are no blame, and we move on. Um, I usually, you walk away feeling inspired, but also kind of overwhelmed, like, I can't do these things at my company. And that's not my goal here. So this talk is not how to be perfect. It's about practical ethics. So I'm just going to tell you about what it is that we do with data and experimentation, um, how we have messed up, and how we try to fix it when we've messed up. So all of us are going to mess up at some point, right? This is important to know. And at Mozilla, we've put a lot of work into trying to do these things in an ethical way. But that doesn't mean we always get it right. Part of ethics is admitting when you mess it up and fixing it. So. I'll begin with some standard disclaimers. I'm just going to talk about what we do. I said not claiming it's perfect. The thing to note is that this approach is open source. All of our documentation is on public wikis and in GitHub repos or Mercurial repos, but this is all in GitHub repos. Um, so you can steal it for your own, make it better, fork it, give us your feedback, pull requests are welcome. That is not a cop out. OK, so here are the basic principles. If you want one slide from this whole talk, this is probably the most important one. We use a collection of what we call lean data practices. Three things. First, collect only what you need. Specifically, collect what you need to answer the questions that you have. Second of all, keep that data for the minimum amount of time that you need it. And third of all, try really, really hard not to violate your user expectations. OK, simple, right? We begin by classifying data into four basic classes. And these are things that an engineer, a data scientist, a marketer might want to collect. And they are ordered from least problematic to more contentious. The first set of things is technical data. And this is, you know, I, I think nobody in this room is going to argue with me that it's kind of important to know things like what version of the software our users running, uh, what operating system do they have, how much memory do they have on the machine. This is opt out. You can actually turn off us collecting this data, but it's really you know, generally speaking, not very contentious. The second category is interaction data. Slightly more invasive, but really not very much so. Uh, how, what's the average number of tabs that people have? Uh, how long do they use Firefox for? What are their config settings set to? Do people turn things off and on? Uh, does anyone use bookmarks anymore? Right? And these are things that are mostly interesting in terms of the distribution. Um, so what are the means? What are the distributions? You know, we, we learn things all the time. And in general, nobody's going to argue with you if you want to collect this kind of data. It's opt out. Again, you can turn it off, but most people aren't really going to care. Then somewhere in between category two and category three, there is this giant dotted line where it gets much stickier. And the third category of things is web activity data. So the chief example here is browsing history. These are the URLs that you visit. And honestly, most people don't want these collected. right? Um, Browsing history is a minefield for all kinds of reasons, especially if you pair it with any kind of identifying information. If you are old enough, which I am, you may remember AOL releasing a whole bunch of web logs. Um, and they were anonymized, right? Anonymized is one of the scariest words in the English language. Um, and it was pretty possible to extract you know, wh who, was, who had done what and which teachers were looking at things on the, web, on the internet that they shouldn't be looking at. There was all sorts of stuff about it. Um, a non-webby example that's pretty similar, activity data in general, is scary, right? People remember the Uber trip logs coming out, and it was pretty easy to reconstruct from those where somebody might live and what their patterns of activity were. So even beyond that, URLs can be non-item potent. For all we say, you know, everything should be item potent, but you can visit something and change somebody's data. And they also often contain usernames, passwords, and emails, which are worse, again, than URLs. Having said that, we do sometimes collect them. There has to be a really good reason, and that always has to be opt out, and there has to be some kind of mitigation in place. I'll give you some examples in a little while. The fourth category is stuff that we basically don't collect. It's highly sensitive data. So things that are identifying, email, username, not just uh, personally identifying, but generally identifying. But in general, you should assume at Mozilla that you can't collect these, right? We do in one case, right? It's opt-in with advance notice, user consent, and secondary opt-out. 